Guys, what's going on? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're gonna to talk about the HyperX Cloud Core Wireless, a no frills, high performance, $100 wireless headset. Um, this was not sent to me for review. I purchased this because, um, as you can tell behind me, there's a lot of really good or uh, decent wireless headphones at $100, and I think it's actually one of the most popular categories for gaming headsets because there's not a lot of people spending hundreds of dollars, uh, you know, two, three hundred dollars on a gaming headset. This is more of the normal uh, price range for people. So it's important to know what you get. Um, I really like the Cloud Series. This is built just like the Cloud that was $70 that I reviewed in my uh, prior uh, coverage I did about a year ago. Um, it's basically based off the Tackstar Pro 80, which is a, he a headphone that came out in like 2012 or something. It's a great sounding headphone and HyperX basically made it into their Alpha Series. They actually sold it for a lower price and included a microphone. So the value is there. And they basically took the $70 headset that was awesome and they made it wireless without adding all these crazy features, hence why it's called the Core. So what makes it the Core is when you look at the button configuration and everything on it, you don't have like game to chat, party mix or any of that. It's a power button. You have your mic mute, a volume rocker and a detachable mic, which is really nice because honestly, for $100, you get an aluminum frame. Um, this is built extremely well, and I actually like the all black color wash on it um, with the little red logo. There's no fancy lights. It doesn't look tacky at all, um, but it's made extremely well. No noises. I mean, that's solid. Now, if I had to nitpick anything for uh, ergonomics of it, just while I'm, I'm doing all this stuff, the ear cups do tilt a lot, which I like, but there's no rotation. Um, there's a like maybe two degrees, if that. Uh, it's almost enough for most people, but depending on your head shape, you may not get a perfect seal. We'll talk about that after. Um, but for the most part, it's comfortable enough. And I think my favorite thing about it is the way the clamp force is on this. So a lot of people with larger heads tend to have a hard time finding the right headset for them. So if you have a larger head and you're nodding right now, you're welcome. I got you. There is an interesting trait about certain headphones and that is that the clamp force isn't always linear. They uh, open up a little bit and like, oh, that's perfect. Then if your head's just a little bit bigger, now like the clamp force doubled and it becomes uncomfortable. This is very, very linear, which means if you size this all the way up for a larger head, which, you know, on mine, even with the hat on, you could see a gap, um, you're not gonna have too much pressure on your ears and that means it's really comfortable for long periods of time. Now this says it's memory foam, fairly dense memory foam. Um, it's not too, too plush, um, but because of the clamp force being on the medium to light side, it still works really well with glasses. Uh, this isn't the most comfortable ear pad, but because of the way the clamp force is, and I'm telling you, it's, it's damn near perfect. I don't use that term almost ever. Um, it's actually still really comfortable for glasses. Now it's a leatherette ear cup. There's no hybrid fancy business going on. It is a standard leatherette ear cup which helps with a few things. Uh, one, it's easy to keep clean, but by ha being leatherette, it makes a really good seal around your ears. Now the cloud has a great sound signature. Having a good seal means you're getting the lower frequencies. Um, they're basically more pronounced. So if you're looking for immersion and you like that rumble effect, a leatherette ear cup really helps extend the low frequencies to get the most bass you can. Doesn't mean it's making the rest of it less clear or harder to hear, um, but it's good to have that. Now the downside to leatherette is it doesn't breathe as well. So if you tend to get very hot uh, or your ears get a little sweaty or spicy, if you will, uh, you may want to look at uh, an alternative fabric material. These are swappable. They're not glued in. So you can either buy different pads online. I know uh, Deconi, uh, D-E-K-O-N-I, makes swappable pads that'll fit, for example. Um, but if you like this and you want a different pad, do that. Otherwise, the Barracuda X and the Recon 500s and the SteelSeries Arctis 1 all have a sport mesh uh, fabric. So I do like the build quality. This is, to me, my preference of style uh, at this price range. I'm not biased. Again, I, I don't play on these all the time, but I, I really, really like this design because of how simple and elegant it is. Now, the nice thing is this has USB-C, which is great because that helps with rapid charging. And let's face it, it's 2020, everything should be USB-C now. So this has a 20 hour battery life. If you use the USB-C cable, it'll fully charge from dead in three hours, which means a 30 minute charge should give you enough juice to get through an entire night of gaming. Now, the USB-C cord that's included with this is only half a meter, 18 inches. 
extremely short. So if you want to charge while you play, your head's either going to be tethered to the desk or you're going to need to buy a longer USB-C cable. Thankfully, they don't do anything, uh, anything funky with the USB-C port. Some headsets kind of put them in a tight spot. You can swap this out with any USB-C cable and be good to go. I am happy to report that it will work while you are charging via USB-C. So if you're concerned with that, there's no problem there. It's not using the USB-C as an audio connection. The only way to send audio to this headset, the only way, is the USB transmitter that's included, which is USB Type A. There's no fancy USB-C stuff, no converters, extension cords. It's this and a short cable, that's it. No carrying pouch, you're paying for the hardware and, and that's super important. So that covers at least what you get out of the box. Now the other thing I noticed, there's no voice prompts or uh, anyone talking to you, if you will, when you turn it on, it's basic beeps and that includes when you're muting and unmuting and when you power it on. This does connect to the transmitter extremely quickly. So as soon as you power it on, you're good to go within a second, sometimes two seconds, but almost instantaneous, which is awesome. I talked about comfort earlier. I do like the comfort of this. I didn't find it got, getting too hot. Um, I haven't had that issue with most headphones in the past anyway, but I do wanna point out, this is a fairly narrow opening. It's one and a half inches wide, two and a half inches long, but it's shallow. It's five eighth inch thick padding. Um, so not super deep. The good news is this cover right here that you see, the, the baffle cover, is actually padded. There's probably about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit less than that uh, padding over the baffle. This is designed to press lightly against your ears. It's not a heavy force. Some people hate feeling their ears touch the, uh, the baffle cover or the drivers themselves. Um, but with the padding here, it's, it kind of just becomes one with the ear cup and you don't notice it or it doesn't cause any pain or discomfort. If you don't want your ears to touch the padding at all, then, or the inner part of the driver, but you like this headphone, again, just swap the pads. There are thicker ones out there. That'll give you more breathing room. I actually like this one because it's padded. I have $300 headphones that have shallow cups that don't have pads. So this was uh, a pretty awesome uh, welcome addition <laughs> in the $100 price range. All right, switching over to the microphone, obviously not the best sounding microphone out there. Um, admittedly, this is one of the lower quality microphones, even compared to all the other headsets behind me. Most of those sound better, um, specifically the Barracuda X from Razer and uh, the Rockat Elo Air. Uh, those microphones are probably the best sounding ones in this price range, followed closely by things like the Lucid Sound. Uh, LS15. So not a bad microphone. It actually does a pretty good job with plosives. So if you're talking and you hear that sound, um, it does a pretty good job of rejecting that. It also does a good job at rejecting a lot of background noise. It's just um, not the most rich, full sounding microphone out there. So if you are using this primarily as the, if you just want the best quality gaming headset you can get at a hundred bucks and you want it wireless for PC, for example, um, this is probably still the way to go. Just if you're using this for podcasts and streaming and you're just trying to get the most out of a hundred dollar budget, I would consider the Barracuda X, um, you know, or, you know, the other models I mentioned earlier, like the Elo Air. So not bad. Uh, it's passable, but I wouldn't use this for a stream or podcast by any means. All right. Now it's time to talk about sound quality, which is my favorite part. And I'm going to try not to spend like the next 20 minutes just talking about sound, but um, I, this is the best part about this headset. The build quality and the comfort is class leading, but the best part about this headset is the sound quality. That, even on the, the $70 price range, it was always great. I knew it would set the bar high, and I'm glad that the wireless model didn't have any detrimental impact on the sound. Because it's getting the analog connection out of the equation, the DAC inside, or the amp that's powering this headset, could have negatively impacted the sound. And I'm pleased to say that's not the case here. No hum, no noise. That's called your noise floor, meaning that if you're in a game and the game is dead silent, do you hear a hiss or a hum? None of that. It's super, super clean sounding. Now, as far as compatibility goes, before I go off the deep end with audio quality, this says it's a PC headset. This does work with X, or sorry, not Xbox. It works with PlayStation 5 and it works with a Nintendo Switch if it's docked. And of course your PC because of the USB a transmitter. I had no problems working this on um, PlayStation, including using the Tempest 3D audio. Works totally fine. You can change your profiles. The microphone works fine as well. The sensitivity on this is a little lower. So on your PlayStation 5, if you're using this for that, it's a great headset for PlayStation 5. Just boost the mic sensitivity in your settings and that will help make sure that you sound just as loud as some of your friends that might be using a more sensitive microphone. On the PC side, it does work 
with uh, Dolby Atmos. It does work with Windows Sonic and it comes with a uh, DTS license. Um, I've never been a huge fan of DTS in the past, admittedly. Um, it's because of my experience I have with the Logitech G Pro Wireless or G Pro X Wireless. Um, there was a sample rate bit rate issue on that that caused detrimental impact on the surround processing. It just didn't sound good at all. So unless you mess with the sample rate. This one out of the box is locked to 16 bit 48 kilohertz uh, sample rate. And the DTS app sounds ridiculously good on this. It doesn't make a big difference at all. It's almost unnoticeable on certain things, which is good because I can't stand virtualization uh, software for 3D audio. I usually like it to be more on the stereo side and rely on the game to handle all the processing. But the DTS on computer, I, if you can enable it, enable it. Um, just download the Adobe app or DTS app. It's free because this has a license that's built into it with the transmitter. You don't have to pay for anything. Uh, it's good for the life of the product and it sounds phenomenal. So sound quality, bass extension on this is nice and deep. It actually goes below 20 hertz. It's rated for 10 to 21,000 hertz due to those massive 53 millimeter drivers. Usually inexpensive headsets, the sub $100 stuff, they use 40 to 50 mil, which is pretty common. And 40 mil drivers can still sound good, but they don't always have the, the sub bass extension, which is your immersion, you know, the rumble during an earthquake or an explosion. Uh, some of the headsets behind me are very boomy, meaning the high bass is really strong, but the low bass is, is either missing or it's just, it doesn't sound right. This is good bass and it's not that it overpowers the track, it just sounds the way it should. And it rolls off as you get into the, the mid bass, which is nice. So it's not gonna make the sound too muddy. So if you're concerned with footsteps and an open sound stage, that gets used all the time. But basically, if you're concerned with positional awareness, this is again, class leading at $100. It's some of the best sound you can get from a $100 wireless headset. I'd, it'd be really hard pressed to find something that uh, just blows this out of the water. It, it's about as good as it gets at this price. So the mids, very, very flat, just like the other cloud uh, products. They have an excellent mid range. And then the top is a little bit on the brighter side. It's fairly detailed. There's a random drop at 4,000 Hertz and it's an aggressive drop in noise. It's like a negative 15 or 20 dB decrease at four kilohertz. Very, very narrow notch if you're looking at on a, a frequency chart. Um, it just means that if you're listening to certain music, I found that with some rock or some female vocals, they're not as present or pronounced uh, as some other headsets are that are a more flat, uh, even upper frequency band. They do that though to reduce fatigue and harshness. You know, um, the way this is tuned helps with like sibilance, uh, which is like sound. Certain tracks will get a little bit sharp, but overall, this is a gaming headset first and foremost. Um, it's one of the few, including everything behind me, that can handle music incredibly well, but give you a massive competitive edge on gaming. The other random thing I noticed when I enabled or disabled the DTS app, with DTS disabled, there's a slight drop at 80 hertz for some reason. And when I enabled DTS, it flattened it out and fixed the bass. So again, that was another reason why I think using the DTS app on the computer is worth it. Uh, in 90% of the time, you're never gonna notice that. And on gamings, I didn't, or gaming on PlayStation, I didn't notice that at all either. Obviously there's no DTS app on the PlayStation, just use the um, uh, Pulse, the Tempest 3D audio stuff from Sony. So um, that's the review in a nutshell. I, I could go on, I, I have all the competitors behind me, so I'll, I'll just quickly touch on that. I already mentioned the Barracuda X because um, the microphone on that is phenomenal at $100. What this does for build quality and sound quality the Barracuda does for microphone quality at 100 bucks. It's not as clear or bright or open sounding as this. However, it's passable and with a little bit of uh, audio tuning, it could still sound great. Um, so that probably be my closest recommendation. The other one, believe it or not, the Rockat Elo Air. Um, this is 100. This came out a year ago. It's still USB-C, which is great. Um, it actually has a very nice, fairly neutral sound profile and the microphone's actually really decent as well. So it's a good balance of both the Barracuda and the HyperX Cloud uh, Core. I like this one. It has the ski band goggle style or ski goggle style uh, headband, which is extremely comfortable. Doesn't have the same weakness uh, point that some of the Steel Series Arctis line has. Um, the only thing with this is because this is kind of like their first one doing this. There's a little bit of resonance, so um, there's some noise that gets transferred into the ear cup. That's probably my biggest nitpick. 
and the transmitter sometimes takes a while to connect, but it will always work. The others, uh, the PlayStation and the Xbox headsets don't sound that great, uh, to be honest. And then the Lucid Sounds, if you just want the loudest possible volume at $100, the Lucid Sound still sounds good. It has kind of inconsistent treble, but the volume of that thing is insane. This is up there in volume, but it's not the loudest you can get at this price point. It's comparable to the Barracuda X, which sometimes the Barracuda seemingly have a little bit more volume, uh, but the Lucid is definitely the loudest. Then lastly, you have the Arctis One Wireless at $100, which has a decent mic. It's definitely a better sounding mic than this. The clamp force is very high on the Arctis One Wireless. Uh, the only reason why I would get that is if you want maximum versatility at $100. It comes with a USB-C transmitter and an adapter in the box, the Xbox wireless version uh, for $100, which means you can use it wirelessly on Xbox One, Series S, Series X. You can use it wirelessly on the PC, the Nintendo Switch docked or handheld mode, and it works wirelessly on the PlayStation 5, again with Tempest Audio. So if you have every single console under the sun um, and PC, then the Arctis One is your single investment that will cover them all. However, if you're spending that kind of money on hardware, step up to the Arctis 7X because that does everything the One does, but sounds a lot better and is more comfortable. So going back to the $100 price point, this is a top recommendation for me. Uh, if what I said uh, still sounds good to you and you're okay with the way the mic is or the lack of other uh, additional features, this does not require any special software to work. It's full plug and play. Um, I think this is a great headset. So hopefully you found this review helpful. Uh, if you did, great. If not, let me know if we can uh, answer any questions for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe because we're going to be covering several of these headphones behind me that I also purchased um, to give a nice fair comparison. But overall, I can tell you right now, this is one of the best ones out there at this price. Absolutely love it. Thank you all so much for the support. I'll put a link in the description below. So if you think this is the right one for you, click that link. It'll take you to Amazon. It's a basic Amazon affiliate link. I have no connection with HyperX. They haven't actually returned an email before. <laughs> so um, this is all me just trying to uh, cover this uh, product the best I can. So thank you again. And I'll see you next time.